Much love, Reflection. Today we'll go over Child's Pose, Balasana. So in yoga, this is going to be one of the more approachable inversions to take. So an inversion in anatomical terms is when your head goes lower than your heart. So what this will do will help to relax your, your mind, help to relax your emotions, and all your body, all that goodness. So child's pose balasana, I'll show you real quick. You'll take your your toes together, your big toes together, and then knees will go to the width of your mat or whatever you're working on. And then just walk your hands forward. Boom, forehead to the mat. So you can see that my heart is gonna be above my head. And make sure this isn't in my way, right? And with that, again, that's gonna it's gonna increase the blood flow to your head. So it's gonna be very calming, very relaxing. And depending on where your practice is at, may depend on how you work with your balasana, your child's pose. So if knee flexion, bending your knees like that is not quite happening, then there's a couple different ways that you can work with it. So I have a med meditation pillow that you can throw back underneath your knee, your back underneath your, on top of your heels, underneath your glutes. So this will give you some support so that when you come down, you have that support so your hips aren't just hanging up in the air, right? So you can have that point of contact and really relax your hips into the pose, okay? You can also use a block. Blocks will be very common in yoga classes, so you can have it on a low setting, you can have it on a medium setting, and that's all I'm really gonna work with or show right now. So again, low setting on, on your heels, medium setting on your heels, and then another way that you can use this is um, with your chest. So you can have the block medium setting, at least for myself, and then you'll work your way into your child's pose where the block is on your chest so it gives your your upper body some support okay so those are a couple different variations modifications that you can use if your knee flexion in the moment um just isn't quite there yet so the knee flexion can be coming from your quadriceps um, a lot of different other things you know previous injuries and things of that nature so ways that you can um, work with this in more of a variation style you can do a twist so you'll thread one hand underneath and then the other hand will go up and over your back okay so I'm adding in rotation to my spine okay and then plant your hand come up thread it the other way okay so one variation that you can use and then another variation that you can use is working with lacrosse balls okay so lacrosse balls if you've ever worked with them aren't the most uh, most forgiving tools to work with so when you use these be very very mindful uh, as you enter the posture okay <laughs> and I just I just did some jump roping and agility work earlier today so I'm gonna use a block for some support on this okay so the way you'll do this you'll get your legs set up and then you'll come up and you'll kind of pin one in lightly and then work on the other side and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my my block on the medium setting to my heels actually I'll probably go on the low setting so I had that low setting some some support for myself and then go into the posture. So what this does with the with the lacrosse balls is compressing your calf muscles as well as compressing your, your hamstrings. Okay, so in this you have plantar flexion of your ankle joints. So plantar flexion of your ankle joints, you have let's get a little better view of this. You got dorsiflexion, you pull your foot back, right? and you got plantar flexion. So when you have plantar flexion, that's what's gonna contract your calf muscle, okay? It's gonna engage these muscles back here. So in doing that, 
you and having a lacrosse ball compress on it, you're adding that compression when the muscle is going into, into the contraction. Okay, so this can be very beneficial. It's also going to do that with your hamstrings. Your hamstrings will pull your, your heel to your glute. They'll flex your knee joint. Okay, so it's working both your calf muscles and your hamstrings into short. So a good way to work with that afterwards, okay? So you'll have the cross balls, boom, you're in your child's pose, okay? And you just had all that compression when the muscles are going short. So then you can take a down dog from there. So now I have knee extension so my hamstrings are long, I also have hip flexion, so my hamstrings are extra long, okay, both functions, and then I have the plantar, or excuse me, the dorsiflexion in my ankle, so that's going to strength or contract the shin muscles, and then stretch through your calf muscles, okay, so you'll, you can have that shortening and compression, and then going long into the stretch, so really working both sides of the joint and opening up your body more and more. So child's pose, very beneficial to work with. Like I said, one of the more approachable inversions to work with. And you, inversions are very, very beneficial. This also will bring your energy down to earth, both on a physical sense and metaphysical sense. So obviously you're connecting physically to the planet, but you can also connect metaphysically to the planet. So when you're in your child's pose, it's a great opportunity to ground yourself, to ground any energies that you no longer want with you, okay? Ground them into Mother Earth, allow her to work with them, to transmute them, to recycle that energy into a more high vibratory state for all of us to access. Okay, so child's pose, very, very beneficial. Okay, if you have any other questions on child's pose, always let me know. I'm going to be making a lot more posture videos coming up as time goes on, so keep tuning in. Peace.